Hi, I'm Ian Morley. I'm a lecturer in paleoanthropology in the University of Oxford and I teach human evolution and uh, Paleolithic archaeology. My particular area of interest is the earliest evidence for musical activities amongst humans. Now humans have been capable of musical activities for a very long time but we know that at the time that modern humans first come into Europe, people like us, at around 40,000 years ago, they were already making music. And we know this because we find evidence of certain kinds of musical instruments that they made. Uh, bone flutes, for example, usually made out of the bones of uh, birds. But we know from looking at the musical instruments of a lot of different cultures in the world today that the vast majority of instruments are actually not made from bone or from materials that would preserve in the archaeological record. So we're very lucky to have anything at all. For example, this is a Peruvian pipe, but it's made out of a piece of bamboo. Now this again, like a bird bone, is very easy to work. It's much bigger than a bird bone is, but it's naturally hollow. It's quite soft and easy to work but it produces a range of noises. Many people would recognize this as being very like a recorder, it's a flute. Makes quite a nice tone, but maybe not when I'm playing it. Other kinds of instruments that are very popular in different cultures are percussion instruments, a major part of our own uh, type of musical instrumentation and our musical traditions, percussion is hugely important and in fact in many cultures percussion instruments are more important than melodic instruments because we can use our voices to produce melody. But this percussion instrument is made entirely from wood and from skins, animal skins and little beads made out of wood or they might be made out of seeds in some examples and some cord, very fine cord such as the kind that's being made by other people here today. And none of these things would preserve, but it could be a very important part of people's musical traditions. Another example would be something like this, pan pipes, well known from Peru, but also from lots of other parts of the world. If these were being used by, by past populations in the Paleolithic, and we found them today, we wouldn't necessarily realise that they were an instrument, because we wouldn't find them all in one place, all tied together neatly like this, because the thread that ties them together would have disappeared. There's another kind of musical instrument that we do have evidence for from the Paleolithic and that's a bull roarer. Now this is very famous in Australia, lots of Australian native um, populations still use a bull roarer but it, they're also used in many different populations around the world. It's a piece of wood or a piece of bone, usually a sort of almond shape like this and it's on the end of a cord and it's swung around the head and as it spins it produces a, a very atmospheric throbbing sound. It's often considered to have all sorts of special powers and significance and in some ways it replicates the sounds of cattle which is where we get our name bull roarer from. And this is an example that I've got here that I'm going to work through shaping and eventually when we get it to the right shape we'll be able to decorate it and pierce a hole in it using a stone tool and tie some cordage to it. This is some cordage that was made by Clint earlier on out of nettles. We'll be able to tie a cord to it and we'll spin it around our heads and see what kind of noise it makes. Ah, now I've pierced the hole using stone tools. Now we can try it out. Now we tried it using a nice piece of natural nettle cord and it worked quite well, but the cord snapped eventually. So our experimental archaeology tells us that if you're going to make a bull roarer, you need thicker cord like this. Mm -hmm. 